Hi! If you want to know how to get the best quality footage out of your drone, you've come to the right place. We'll go over everything that's necessary to max out the quality, be it camera and exposure settings, location and lighting, as well as helpful accessories. This video is going to be a bit longer, but after watching it, you'll know absolutely everything to get banger footage. Let's dive right into it! Ok, before you hit record, we're going to dial in some general settings. For demonstration, I'm going to use my DJI Mini 3 Pro, but most of it translates to other drones from DJI and other brands. Turn on your drone and your controller and tap the three little dots in the upper right corner of your controller screen. On the safety tab, you'll find obstacle avoidance action. Generally, I'd leave that on break to have an extra safety net when flying. But when you intend to fly close by objects or in narrow spaces, I'd rather turn it off in order to get smooth drone movement. The obstacle avoidance acts very sensitive and it might otherwise get in your way of capturing smooth shots. Next, go to the Control tab and enter Gain and Export Tuning. The settings here change the speed and smoothness of the drone and gimbal movement and the sensitivity of the control sticks. You can adjust those settings separately for Cine, Normal and Sports mode. Cine mode is the slowest, which I use mostly when I fly close to objects or in narrow spaces. Normal mode is a bit faster and for general use, and sports mode I only use when I fly up very high in the sky in order to get more speed or to take the drone quickly to where I want to film. I'll demonstrate the gain and expo tuning only for normal mode, as this is the mode I use the most. To make your shots look more cinematic, you'd usually want the moves to be slow and smooth. So for the max angular velocity, I set a rather low value of 30 degrees per second, as this is more than enough to accomplish every shot that I want. The higher the yaw smoothness, the less abrupt the drone is stopping the turning movement. 75 is a good value for me. Same goes for the gimbal tilt speed down here. For me, 10 degrees per second is more than enough and paired with a high smoothness value of 25, this gives me very smooth and cinematic camera movement. The expo settings here in the middle control the sensitivity of the control sticks. You can control these values for forward or sideward flight, yaw and climb and descent speed. On point 5 it is completely linear. If you go lower than that, the stick sensitivity around the center position is lower and increases exponentially when you push the stick to the more extreme positions. Higher than point 5 it's the other way around, but that wouldn't make any sense if you want to get smooth and cinematic shots. Most drone pilots use an expo lower than 0.5 in order to be able to accomplish very subtle and slow movements. I use 0.2 for all three axes. Here are the values I use. You can use these as a good starting point for you and do further fine adjustments if needed. When you have set up your gain and expo tuning to your liking, you can leave this menu and check the gimbal mode under the control tab. This should be set to follow mode to have the gimbal remain horizontally at all times. You can of course use FPV mode if you want to have FPV like footage, but in my opinion it doesn't really look like real FPV footage. Tap on the camera settings and activate histogram. The histogram is a very helpful tool to nail the exposure perfectly. A little bit below the histogram option there is overexposure warning. Activate this little helper as well. I'll explain both in more detail a little bit later when we talk about exposure settings. Below is the grid lines option. I use the third grid line and the center mark in order to be able to better align my shots. And the last thing here in the menu is the image style. Here you can change sharpness and noise reduction settings. You can play around with those a little bit. I leave them both on zero and so far I'm happy with the results. To enter video settings, tap on this auto symbol in the lower left corner to enter pro mode. Then tap on this area here to enter video settings. The first thing here is white balance. You don't want the white balance to be on automatic because this might give you color shift during a clip. So deactivate auto and set the white balance manually. Assuming that you're going to fly outdoors, a white balance of around 6000 Kelvin should be good in most cases. A slight adjustments to that can be done later in color grading without any loss of quality. But most of the time I find myself ending up really happy without any adjustments to that. The next setting is video resolution. This is straightforward. For the highest quality, choose the highest resolution. 4K in case of the DJI Mini 3 Pro. Next up is the frame rate. You have the choice between 6 frame rates here. 24, 25, 30, 48, 50 and 60 frames per second. Video frame rate is a very controversial topic. 
I have a separate video on this topic only if you're interested in the whys and wherefores. I'll put a link down in the description below. But in order to keep this video as short as possible, I'll leave out the detailed explanations and want you to simply trust me on this one. For real-time video, choose 30 FPS. Only, and really only if you produce content to be viewed in a cinema, choose 24 FPS. If you produce content for broadcast in PAL countries, choose 25 FPS. For any other use case, that includes YouTube, Instagram, TikTok or any other formats that are mainly watched on smartphone, tablet or computer displays, 30 FPS is the right choice. Trust me on that one. If you want to capture slow motion, choose 60 FPS. This gives you two times slow motion on a 30 FPS video project. Speaking of slow motion, the DJI Mini 3 Pro also offers ultra slow motion footage at 120 frames per second. For that, you have to leave this menu, tap here on the right side and choose slow motion. But as a downside, it's only 1080p footage with the normal color profile. I have never used it. Next up is the color profile. Choose normal if you don't plan on color grading your footage afterwards. If you want to get the best quality footage for color grading, however, choose d like or D-Log on the more professional DJI drones. These are flatter color profiles in 10-bit that give you way more flexibility in post-processing. Now for the coding format, H.265 is the better and more efficient codec. It is able to store more details in the same file size and is therefore better suited for editing. It is, however, more demanding on your playback hardware, so you have to check whether your computer can handle playing back and editing H.265 without any stutter. If your computer can handle it, it is definitely the better choice. If you only want to view and share your footage without any video editing, H.264 is more compatible and will be of sufficient quality. My choice is clearly H.265. And the last point here is the video format. The choice in between MP4 and MOV has no impact on video quality. MP4 is the international standard and more widely compatible. MOV was developed by Apple and is not as widely compatible. Because I edit on Apple computers, I choose MOV. If you only plan on sharing and viewing your footage without editing, MP4 might be the better choice due to its wider compatibility. Now that we have set up the drone to give us the best quality footage, we also have to find a beautiful location. You can't get good footage when you're filming in an ugly or boring location. So go out and explore your surroundings to find great spots. The second thing here is lighting. With drones you will be mostly filming outdoors, so your lighting is dependent on the weather and the time of day. I wouldn't go as far as to say that one lighting condition is better than the other. You simply have to think about what kind of look you want to achieve. When you film on a sunny day during midday when the sun is very high, the contrast between light and shadows will be very harsh and in most circumstances that might not be the look you're after. If it is an overcast day, it really depends. When the cloud cover is so thick and dense that there is no directional light at all, the image might look very flat and boring. If, however, it is cloudy or overcast and the light is still coming from one distinct direction, casting soft shadows, that can give a very beautiful and favorable look. The probably most spectacular and beautiful videos will be captured around sunrise and sunset, when the golden light is coming from the side. But as pointed out before, you have to think about what kind of look you want to achieve. Now that you have found a great location and the right lighting, you only have to nail the exposure. This is very critical in order to get the best quality out of your drone. Open up the exposure settings by tapping this area here in the lower right corner. The first decision you have to make is whether you want to use manual exposure or auto exposure. I strongly advocate for manual exposure because shifts in exposure within a clip don't look good or professional. Deactivate auto ISO and auto exposure in case they are activated. Now the first thing we have to consider is ISO. Very bluntly said, the lower the ISO, the better the video quality is going to be. And usually during daytime you won't need any higher ISO than base ISO. Only during twilight or night you might have to raise the ISO to boost the sensor output to get an adequate exposure. But for daytime the lowest ISO should be fine. On the Mini 3 Pro that's ISO 100, so we choose that. Now we just have to adjust the shutter speed to get the right exposure. For that, we take a look at the histogram, which shows the brightness distribution in the image. The further to the left the darker, and the further to the right the brighter the image. To get the highest quality possible, you want to expose as bright as possible, but without overexposing relevant parts of the image. So ideally, you'd want to push the histogram as far to the right as possible, 
without any larger areas of the image being covered with the overexposure warning, the so-called zebras. This is too much, so we have to dial back exposure by altering the shutter speed. If there are only slight edges covered by the zebras, it's not a problem usually, but avoid larger areas to be overexposed. And sometimes the contrast between the dark parts and the bright parts of the image is so huge that you won't be able to capture all of it. In this case, you have to think about what part is more important for your video and expose either for the darker parts or the brighter parts of the image. Usually you can choose between autofocus and manual focus. In order to select either, simply tap on this symbol on the right side of the main screen to switch between autofocus and manual focus or tap and hold to find and just manual focus. On the DJI Mini 3 Pro, autofocus should be fine, but I have always used manual focus set to infinity to make sure there are no unwanted focus shifts. For this, simply tap and hold the focus button and set the slider to the position with the mountain symbol. This keeps everything in focus from just a few meters distance up to infinity. ND filters are the only important accessory to get high quality footage. Until now, we have adjusted exposure mainly by altering the shutter speed. This is easy and gives us the exposure we want. What's problematic about it is the fact that during daytime there is so much light that the resulting shutter speed is usually very fast. The single frames of the video don't contain any motion blur, which makes the video look stuttering and not very pleasant to the eye. And that's where ND filters come into play. ND filters are basically sunglasses for your camera. They reduce the amount of light that falls onto the camera sensor and therefore allow you to choose slower shutter speeds to compensate the light loss and those slower shutter speeds give you the motion blur and smooth look we are aiming for. ND filters come in different strengths like ND16 or ND64. The number tells you by which factor the amount of light is approximately reduced, that is, how much slower the shutter speed is going to be with a specific filter. In order to choose the right ND filter strength, you first have to know what shutter speed you should be aiming for. Generally speaking, the shutter speed should be around twice the frame rate you use. So when using 30fps, ideally you should fall in place somewhere around 1 60th of a second. In order to get the perfect exposure as explained in the previous exposure chapter, you might not always land exactly at 1 60th of a second. From my experience, anything from 1 30th of a second up to 1 hundredth of a second looks good. This also depends on the content of the video clip, I'll explain that a little bit later. For example, when you nail the perfect exposure without ND filters with 1 over 640 of a second, an ND16 is most probably the best choice as it will bring down the shutter speed by a factor of around 16, which should give you around 1 40th of a second. When it comes to the Mini 3 Pro, I know from experience that on sunny days I'll usually end up using ND64. On overcast days, depending on the overall brightness, somewhere between ND16 and ND32, and the closer we get to twilight, the lower the required ND filter strength is going to be. That leads me to the next point, which ND filter set should you buy? I have used a few different ones. The original DJI ND filters, some ND filters from Star Trek, Sky Reed and Freewell. Quality wise they were all fine, but my favorite is the Freewell All Day 6 pack, because it starts with ND4 instead of ND8 or ND16 with the other sets. Sometimes the jump in exposure between no ND filter and ND8 or ND16 is too big, so ND4 comes in handy at times. So all in all, ND filters are a very important accessory to get good looking drone footage. But there are situations where it is not as crucial to get the shutter speed right. When you film a video clip that does not contain much movement in the frame, you can get away without ND filters and therefore faster shutter speeds. This is usually the case when you move your drone only forwards or backwards very slowly and are far away from the ground or any other objects. But as soon as you fly close to the ground or objects, or you involve some panning or tilting motion or any other move that causes noticeable motion from frame to frame, you will see a distinct difference between footage captured without ND filters and footage captured with ND filters. So keep that in mind, ND filters are not always necessary, but it's a good practice to put on the right ND filter for the specific brightness conditions. Now you have dialed in the perfect settings for your drone, arrived at the location at the perfect time, put on the right ND filter and nailed the exposure perfectly. In order to use all of that to get beautiful drone video, I'll show you some basic drone moves that are easy and work perfectly. More often than not, very complicated drone moves do not look better than the basic ones. 
But before I demonstrate specific drone moves, I want you to know that usually you want your moves to be slow and smooth in order to look good and cinematic. When you've dialed in good X point gain settings and move the control sticks and the gimbal wheel slow and gently, you will get it right. These are the simplest moves. Simply push the right stick forward to fly into the scene or push the stick back in order to fly backwards out of the scene. If you want to reveal the scenery, you can also start with your gimbal tilted down and slowly tilting up while you fly forwards or backwards. This is another classic and very simple move. Simply point your camera gimbal straight down. You can combine this with almost any drone movement. You can fly in any direction by pushing the right control stick to the corresponding direction. As an alternative, you could also simply let the drone climb or descend by pushing the left stick up or down and optionally add some slight rotation by pushing the left stick to the left or the right. This is another very simple but effective move if you want to reveal an object or a landscape. Start behind a foreground object and let the drone climb by pushing the left stick upwards, revealing what hides behind the foreground object. You can also add some gimbal tilt if necessary. This is another classic drone move that works well if you want to showcase a specific object. This move requires a bit more coordination, but it's not hard to master with a little bit of practice. Simply start by pushing the right stick either to the left or to the right, and the left stick in the opposite direction in order to keep the object centered in the frame. This is not one specific move, but when you fly close by objects or the ground, you can add a sense of depth and movement to your footage that really adds to the overall watching experience. I use that a lot. Your footage is now stored onto your memory card. If you have done everything right so far, this footage is now the foundation for a potentially breathtaking video. What separates it from looking really good or eye-catching is post-processing or color grading. Especially if you have filmed everything in D-Cine-like or D-Log, color grading is the one step that makes good footage look great. Look at the following examples which are filmed in D-Cinelike on a DJI Mini 3 Pro and compare how they look before and after color grading. And the best thing about it, good color grading does not even have to be very complicated. If you want to learn it in less than 10 minutes, watch this video next where I show you my approach to color grading in a very simple way. And it does not even require paid software. See you there.